Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we have got one system from the user Schooler Moth in Discord. Um, it's on the workshop. The system is called the Dolphin Giants. So without further ado, got an interesting name but let's go ahead and check it out. So let me go to my subscribe. It should be here. There it is. Okay, let's see what we have got. Right. Oh, oh we got reading. Okay. Right, Do the Dolphin Giants. Greetings. The Mackin system is home to several gas giants, as well as a handful of rocky worlds. I mainly just had fun with the details, but there's a bit of history in these worlds as well. Enjoy the tour. Words ahead. We've got lots of words. Oh, 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 man. Oh, my God. That is a lot of stuff. Wow. Okay. Right. So, here's the system. So, we can see... Quite a small system planet-wise, but we have a lot of reading to make up for it. So, anyways, the star itself, here it is. So, as we can see, uh, looks to be sort of in between a orange-yellow dwarf sort of the levels. I mean, it's not the most luminous thing out there. A little larger than, uh, or a little undersized than the sun, actually, mass-wise. Radius, obviously, 7.79 Jupiters. 7.97, I should say. Okay, cool. Right, anyways, on to the first planet. So, here it is. Whoa, right, okay. So, Hesperides is a warmed world of dazzling clouds, dusks, dawns, and violent years. Winds on this planet can get extreme as hurricanes, and that's on a good day. While the planet isn't hot enough to glow, the atmosphere persists in showing crazy warm colours. Some bands, like the uh, equatorial band of silvery gold, appear to be at higher elevation than other layers. Just like the deep reds near the southern pole, this is just an illusion, but it definitely confused early astronomers. Okay. Oh, you can see the darker reds, yeah. Okay. Nice. So that is the first of the planets. Right, next up, we have got this one here. So Dalatus is quite uh, particular, whereas most other planets have liquid water, um, have a portion of their season freeze water solid. The warmer seasons of this planet cause any water to slowly boil away. Right. It's only during winters where the planet's moon casts a wide shadow on the surface that any moisture can come down to pool on the surface in lakes. Of course, this makes the planet erratic and too hazardous for life to even develop, but it's still quite the sight. Okay, interesting. You can see the moon is in front of it right now, actually. Nice. The moon itself, so this is this object here, so Rebu, has no water to show for. In fact, it's so dry and arid that starlight fuels corrosive winds that have already eroded every tall peak on the moon leaving the entire surface a flat sand pit except for the poles right there it is okay the 400 year old sandstorm makes it almost impossible for any light to reach the surface so the moon is shrouded in darkness it's because of this lack of visibility and thick cloud of debris that our um exonauts coined in saying it'd be better to land on Mackey. okay so yeah this world Imagine Mars in a permanent dust storm with a Venus level sort of atmosphere. That's what this thing is. So, pretty cool stuff there. Nice. Right, so next up we're taking a jump to Chlor Chorus. Chlorus, hope I'm saying these right. Okay. It's a gas giant with some rather interesting bands. Sharing some similarities of Hesperides in terms of dusk shards at the poles, the equator has a sharp contrast of Spain green all the way around the planet. This green area, dubbed the G-Bad, experiences frequent lightning. Historically speaking, this causes an explosion to our diversity in our cultures, stories and legends. Some believe the gas giant was destined to explode, taking us around with it into the unknown. Others saw the sparks of single expression celebrated every night the world was in the sky. Okay, interesting. It's also got a moon called Raud here. It's a barren moon um, insulted by tidal forces. It appears muddy and does not have vast expenses of wet soil and sand. But any oceans have long since boiled away, most likely due to chlorus. The atmosphere is nowhere to be seen. The moon is constantly blasted with radiation from the gas giant as no magnetic sphere to speak of. Uh, so it's at the constant mercy of high radiation. Kind of reminds me of Io around Jupiter, actually. The money deposits, specifically the water within, have been absorbing radiation for millions of years, forming a new biome described best as radioactive quicksand fields. These are currently no colonization efforts planned. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's a pretty crazy area, right? Right. So, right. Sitting a bit behind Rold is our homeworld, Edith. We recognise that our situation is uncommon and the growing a civilization around a gas can impact our culture in interesting ways. Uh, our world is slightly smaller 
than others and less uh, and has less water. There are no continents or tectonic plates, but the core does provide a strong magnetic field or strong enough. Uh, in recent years, we've noticed auroras as far as the tropical boundaries in both hemispheres. Um, and the uh, it says that the internet at the poles has been scrapped recently. If our planet does start to lose its magnetic field, we don't have a lot of great options for a second home. We may soon have to either create our own dinos to man manually kickstart our core or travel to the nearest star. Exteria Proxima. Okay, so this is the Haspel area in this system. So, if we have a look here, so yeah, water is quite low as we can see. There was not much water going on. Interesting stuff. Okay, let's check its stats out. Actually, why not? Ninety-six and zero. I wonder why it's zero. Pretty cold average temperature by the looks of things. Okay, interesting. Right. So where are we going next? Okay, so... A large rocky world sits at the edge of the first belt of debris around our star. Moor. Moor. Here it is. Right. It's got a little moon as well. <laughs> so look at that. Okay, but anyway, so... This uh, planet Moa. The surface is airless, lightly irradiated, and surface to the occasional meteor from either the belt or the planet's own rings. The rings are quite simple, only split in two bands. They're separated by a sizable particle we named Rogla. These rings are probably what remain of a failed moon, which would make Rogla the core. The clarity and thickness of the rings is interestingly high, which leads us to believe the rings are only a few hundred years old. Okay, certainly odd. Interesting. Okay. So now we're taking a jump to Aral over here. It's somewhat of a Gemini system. Whoa. Oh, hello. Right. Got a lot of moons going on here as well. The clouds mimic that of a vibrant red flowers and or budling fruits. So it was renamed after one of our seasonal favourites, the old lamp fruit. The giant has a large collection of moons in our system, but they can all be shortly described. Terulu is volcanic. Bobo has an expansive ocean beneath its crust. And Murph has air. We don't know what Murph does, really. Uh, Seton is in rather bland moon as well. There are also asteroid moons that... Um, most notable being Alda Altortan, which was probably captured from the Astral Belt. If our world dies, this system could provide us with enough resources to regroup and set sail for the next star. But that is it's definitely easier said than done. Okay, so here's all the moons. So, interesting stuff. So, Teru is the volcanic moons. So this is like Io, I guess. So, there's that one. Bobo has a crust. So, this is like the Europa. Of this uh, well, it has a bit of an atmosphere as well, actually. Okay. Murph has air, apparently, so not really much going on here. And Setin is a rather bland moon, so that's the last uh, last of the major moons here. So we can sort of see an Io Europa Ganymede Callisto sort of look uh, going on here. Okay, nice. So now we're taking a jump out. So we've got Unmu and its moon are relatively unremarkable bodies. Okay. They are their own system, but the orbit of the moon is very distant and slow. They aren't made of the same materials, but a capture also seems unlikely. Still, their presence could reveal to be useful as a lack of atmosphere and strong gravity well makes the two bodies perfect sites of gravity assist in future interstellar missions. Okay, so there's the moon pretty far out, isn't it? So, okay, there they are. Right, next up we've got so much reading. This is crazy. Right, uh, so we've got this one here. So, more Pilus is quite the odd planet. You may notice two things. One, it has no moons at all. So, there you go. Oh, it has something, though. What's that? It has no moons at all. In fact, the single object that orbits the planet large enough to even be considered is an asteroid moon. So, that's this one here. It's quite far out as well. Uh, while this planet does have rings, they're messy and thick with dust. This leaves us with a surprising conclusion. The planet quite possibly destroyed the only moon it had due to tidal forces or some other event. It must have been a massive moon, almost a fifth the size of Erdof. The destruction of the moon probably took a course of over a few hundred years and occurred roughly 75,000 years ago. The moon was the most likely rocky with uh, little water or ice. The rings are expected to last millions of years and will probably separate into two distinct bands of denser and wispier materials in a few hundred thousand years. As for the fate of uh, Manu Nima, it may as well outlive many worlds in our system. What's a curious for? Okay, so that's this little guy here. So... Yeah, just chilling, nice and far out. 
And there you go, that's actually a look at the planet itself here. So we can see nice mixes of it's like a Uranus and Neptune blue, very enhanced colours mixed in together. That's a quite an interesting design, actually. I mean, look at that. Looks like a completely different world when you look at it like that. So, pretty cool stuff there. Okay. Nice. Next up, we got Hydro. Okay, so you may want to turn on Studio Light. It does look good, this one. Very, very dark here. Oh, look at the rings. They're exotic, aren't they? Right. You may want to turn this uh, turn this dark out here. This planet wasn't even known to exist until the turn of the century. It has three major moons to speak of, as well as what may be the crown jewel of the entire system. The rings of Hydra Solus are split into several bands and even glow electric blues and violets under the powerful radiation of this world. Okay. Uh, Candice J03, a moon of a similar planet, is likely the cause of the rings being banded, as they still are. So that's this world here here uh what's this all about okay so let's have a look so it's a tiny little moon as we can see okay so that's got those exotic colors on it as well pretty interesting stuff okay uh it's most likely the cause of the rings being banded as they are uh Udalu is a murky version still with similar colors these two moons and the ring express colors that confuse our scientists so an expedition to their surfaces is needed one day Saddle is the furthest satellite, but is largely overshadowed by the other features of the system. Okay, so where's the second moon then? Uh, labels are on. Oh, here it is, so the Oodaloo one over here. Okay, so this one's a little further out. And obviously very, very dark as well. Right, okay. And then there's the sad owl one over here. And then there's the planet itself, so Hydra Solus. This world is so large, we've classified it as a hypergiant world, so, okay. How large actually is this guy then? Seven Jupiter's mass, 4.15 in radius. That is a pretty big guy then. Right, okay. Uh, whether it's a tiny brown dwarf or an irregularly large gas giant is up for debate because we don't really have a defined boundary. Even if we did, Hydro Solus would be sitting on it. The winds on this planet can get extreme, perhaps even more than Hespo rides. The spin rate has created a wide range of atmosphere bands, primarily separated into darker blues and brighter, more pale aquas. We don't know what these gases are, why they've passed into the distinct bands, or what fuels powerful winds on this planet. Uh, but that's just cause more, or there's just more to, call, to come with a specified probe. Sorry, right? Okay. These are the worlds we know, and we can't wait to learn what other kinds exist in the galaxy. Happy travels, friend. I don't know why I called this the Dolphin Giants, but I like it. So here it is. Yeah, I liked it. That was a very very in-depth description system i really like that and i like it so much i'm gonna get a copy of that because that is a good looking world and actually the one before it as well that uh this one the more fearless one I, I i like that as well i'll get copies of those they're the best two for me uh, in this system but yeah let's just actually have a look at it with um go to directional there, there's a better look so that's that's what it actually looks like and it's a gorgeous looking world let's be honest i mean the rings they go with it very very nice as well but yeah, that is a great looking, very vibrant Uranus and Neptune mix colours there. Looking good. Obviously very enhanced colours as well. But yeah, it's a good looking world. So there we are. But let's actually get a lineup of everything here. So this thing is huge compared to the other gas giants in the system. You can see the star isn't that much large. I mean, let's actually give this a little comparison with some of our uh, gas giants that we know. So uh, obviously Jupiter, no match for it. It's four times larger. Uh, if we compare it to, what about if we compare it to uh, HD 100? Because that's obviously a... Uh, pretty large uh, world so here it is so that's one of the larger exoplanets so, i mean look it is a pretty big world this one so it's on the level of that so this is huge so pretty cool stuff there uh but there we go very nice indeed see yeah, overall really really like the system really really like i like the name i think the dolphin was quite a, uh an interesting name for it as well for thought it fit quite nicely and yeah the very very nice description of each of these objects so there we are guys that does it for um this system from the user school and off in discord so massive thank you to them for sending this in very very nice job indeed to them and yeah guys that does it so if you enjoyed this episode make sure to hit that like button let's see if we can go for 50 likes on today's episode because this i thought this was a really good one so yeah let's see if we can go for 50 likes subscribe for more help us on the journey to 25,000 subscribers as we're getting closer and closer each day massive thank you to everyone for that and yeah, guys, if that all said and done, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.